Hey, I'm Anfa. This is a little short video where I want to show you some progress uh, regarding Liblast multiplayer. I've been working on the simplest possible way to conduct multiplayer games, and this is what I have so far. So let me start the server. And now let's join two clients. Call this player one. And you can see this player can run around. However, even though the initial spawn location is correct, the the movement is not synchronized and also the character takes inputs on every instance that it it is on so I, that's that really that's not working yet um but let's see let's connect another player as you can see the spawning works and the players should see each other but without the oh <laughs> Oh, that also. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Right, so these are some things. And oh, that's a client. I want to show you what happens here. Mm. Oh, this color is a bit too similar to that color. Crap. So. I've also created a logger to help me debug multiplayer games where I have multiple instances running, like in here, for instances. So I've made a logger. Uh, it's it's a singleton for now. So it can be accessed via logger. And then the game state, for now only the game state uses it. The game state sets uh, its custom multiplayer to the logger. just just to make sure that um, Logger knows what's happening. Because without this, uh, because we have custom multiplayer per node, then what happens is that because the singleton is at the top level, then it also always uses the default multiplayer API assigned to the scene tree. But when we override it, the Logger won't know unless we tell it. So this is to tell it, and that will allow it to get the peer ID of the current uh, game instance and from that add the the prefixes and coloring to help to help me <laughs> or other developers recognize what is going on so here i started no here we started the server a little bit of scene it spawned this map the map then we connect it as client. You see, some of these messages are not yet pushed for this logger, but they should be all pushed through it. And I'm going to do that soon. Then we have another peer. Now, these peer, ID, peer, peer IDs are shortened uh, because the, the full length is not needed. And I really just need to distinguish between if, is it a server or is it a peer and unique peers so every peer gets a randomly generated color the color gets randomly generated here and we can reuse that also for spawning the character um character models in the game so for easier debugging also where is the character of the you know a given peer etc so yeah slowly moving forward that's all for now see you later